Hey folks, welcome back. This is Joel, and uh, in this video, we'll actually start with uh, uh, some of the lab exercises, right? Uh, we have a very simple topology up here, so <coughs> uh, we will uh, go ahead and kind of like uh, you know install some of the controllers, more specifically the vManage, the vBond, and the vSmart in this Eve NG lab. Um, and uh, hope you guys have checked out the previous. Uh, um, you know, video where we talked about the fundamentals of SD-WAN uh, because that's going to come in handy. Um, and uh, yeah, so let's start it. So we have uh, the Eve NG page from where I have, uh, you know, installed all the various, uh, uh, you know, controller images into my Eve platform. Pretty simple. You just need to go and download, you know, uh, it from this particular link. You know, you get all your. Uh, 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 I mean, you don't get the images here. You get the steps to install it. You need to obviously have a Cisco ID from where you can, you know, kind of like um, log into the Cisco software website and download the images. So right now, we have, I've just, you know, got them and installed them, you know, following the steps mentioned in the Eve page, and you know, I've put them in my topology as such. <clears throat> right. So you can see here the I have the console. Right, so I have the console to all the three appliances, the vBond, vManage, uh, and vSmart. Let's start by, uh, you know, adding the hard disk. So we need to select the hard disk while we install this. So let's do that. Going to select the option one because we need at least a minimum of 100 GB over here. Right. So this would take some time for it to install, right, uh, probably a couple of two, three minutes. Let's wait here. Maybe we could look at the topology during the same time, right? So wasting time. Let me explain what the topology does, right? So we have a PC over here, right? I have just RDP. Let's see if we have connectivity. So I'm trying to connect to the R1 router, R1 internet, right? So I have connectivity from the Windows PC to my router, and um, yeah, so that's majorly that and. So we have like a site one, which is like a headquarters, and then we have branches, right? And then we have the cloud hosted routers here. So we can assume that these are like hosted probably on a uh, Google Cloud or Azure or AWS or something like that, right? Uh, yeah, so we have just simulated the cloud environment here because you know it would be hectic to actually put it deployed on the clouds. So we have just simulated um you know behind the switch in a subnet 1.10 dot slash 24 and so we have connectivity from the pc right up to the you know simulated cloud environment we have three branches site 101 102 103 right the whole idea of your sd WAN is so that you can um, connect all these sites together in a more intelligent and efficient way right programmatic way so that's what we are going to explore in this whole video series Two couple of transports we have. We have the R internet and MPLS over here. Couple of routers simulating the transports, right? Uh, so uh, yeah, from the headquarters we have two exit points. One is from the router one, and the other one is from top from the ASA, right? And uh, yeah, so the whole idea is that um, we need to uh, um, we need to have connectivity onto the controllers, you know, from, from all the edges, from all the sites. Uh, ideally in an environment, ideally in a deployment, you would just want public address, you know, from the vBond, uh, you know, uh, for public address only for the vBond. But in this case, we have just put public address everywhere. The ASA plays a very important part here because we are going to NAT any traffic going out of the headquarters, right? Uh, into um, we're gonna NAT it as it exits the site one, so that's important. Nothing very fancy configuration; it's just your ASA, you know, NAT configurations, right? Awesome. So uh, yeah, I think that is it. The MPLS is something which we're not, not gonna touch for now. We're just gonna play with only the internet. Let's go back. Yeah, that looks good.
I think we are good to do some basic configurations now. Let's just wait for the login screen to appear. I think it's boot, it's just initializing. All right, so let's start with uh, some of the basic con configuration, which is the system config to start with. Right, so let's go inside the system. Put in the host name. Right. We'll use we manage one, yeah. Let's also put in the uh, system IP, which is obviously not routable. It's just and like an identifier, right? Like a router ID kind of a thing. So 1.1255.11255 basically resembles the site number. Let's let me put the IP address over here as well. Otherwise, I think it's difficult for people to understand. So a topology without IP address is difficult to decode, right? So let's put 1.1 slash 24. Okay, let's also duplicate this and put it on the other side because uh, there is another subnet which we are using. So it's going to be 1.1.0 slash 24. So that's the other subnet. I think these are the only two subnets we need for this lab at least because of the other sites and all of that is turned off. We are not going to do anything over there. Let me also put the site uh, ID as well, site 255. Great, that looks good. Let me lock the lab and go back. Yep. We have the system IP, the next would be the site ID 255. What else? What else do we want? Gotta put the organization name. So the organization name is very, very important, right? Uh, all the certificates authentication is gonna be based on this. So make sure you use the same organization name throughout your whole ST1 lab. I'm gonna be using, I don't know, uh, something which, Jamin Dong dash Cisco, right? Let me use that. Do we have to do NTP? I think we have to do NTP on this one. Let me. <clears throat> so yeah, NTP. So I'm gonna use my R1 as my NTP server. This is sitting right there. It's better to mention which VPN you want to prefer. So R1, let me check on my R1 if I have uh, the NTP configured. I'm not sure if I did that before setting up the lab. Yep, I have NTP, which is good. Let me go back. Uh, let me also see the clock, right? So yeah, I have the PST, which is good. So um, yeah, so let's go and tell my, we managed to prefer VPN zero. to reach the NTP server. You have to always come out. So that's something which I don't like about the CLI. Like you have to come out of the mode and then configure. So I'm gonna put the clock time zone here. 
I believe it's America's Los Angeles. Right, PST. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna put the V bond IP as well. It's gonna be 1.10. Dot. Don't confuse the system IP with the actual IP. So this is going to be the actual IP of the V bond. Every of the every appliance is gonna have a system IP as well, but that's just for identify purposes. The V bond is going to be actually reachable or for management purposes, right? So 1.1012 is the management IP of that. So there you go. We are gonna commit now. We have everything configured. Let's go and commit. Looks good. Let's do the interface based configuration now, which is uh, let's just see what interface do we have. Let's do a show run. I believe we have VPN zero and Ethernet zero under it, which is good. Let's go to VPN zero. Let's put the default uh, route for VPN zero, which is going to be my R one router. One dot one zero dot one. And let's go inside interface Ethernet zero. We'll have to put an IP address here. It's gonna be what one dot one zero dot eleven, right? We talked about this earlier. Dot eleven dot twelve dot thirteen. These are three IPs we are gonna be using. It's committed, which is good. Right, we have reachability to the R1 router. Let's say we have reachability if we have reachability from this uh, management PC which we have right in the headquarters. So this is going to connect over the internet to my simulated cloud, obviously over the simulated internet as well. There you go. I have the SSH, which is great. And I'm gonna go back to my secure CIT because I think uh, that's that's better for me so I have some back here okay so <clears throat> what do we do next let's check the NTP I think it's show NTP association probably yep there you go our NTP is good let's see from the browser if I can connect to my web, uh, you know, the web GUI of my vManage. Right, that's the whole point of vManage, right? We want to make it as much as uh, uh, the whole point of STN or SD-WAN is that you can control everything from one single place, configure everything from one single place. So we're going to use vManage for that. So we'll have to plug in the IP address here. Let me set the okay, so that's good. So let's try this. HTTPS probably and the port 8443. It's loading. Okay, so we have this. Let's proceed. Okay, I can see something is happening. Server is initializing. Please wait. So I've actually not done this before, right? On Eve, I've tried it on my other actual appliances, but I have not 
tried the whole solution on Eve. This is the first time I'm doing it, so bear with me. It's considerably slow. I think it's because it was going through the ASA, it's a bit slow. Maybe the links, you know, are dropping the packets. There is connectivity because you see, I'm able to access it. It's just that I feel it's an issue with the firewall. So it's, maybe the links are, let me just pause it for a minute and come back. So. So what I've done is I've added a new PC now. You can see I've added a new PC directly beside uh, my cloud. So I'm going to be accessing it from here because I realized this is faster. And I believe it's the issue was mainly because you know it was going through that ASA and going through that whatever bridge which I have created. You know, it's way, way slower. So no worries. I've already loaded the, uh, you know, dashboard on the other PC in the new PC which I created. And we are good to go. So let's start some basic configurations. Where do we start with? This is how the whole dashboard looks, right? Uh, very powerful dashboard. Let's start with uh, probably going down to settings. A couple of things to be done here. Right, we will put in the organization name. Which is jmendong dash cisco the same one which we used earlier let's put in the uh, vbond ip right so i think it is dot 12 if i'm not wrong okay that looks good What else? I think uh, there are a few other things to be done, probably with respect to certificate. Yep, so let's do the certificates. There are different ways of doing the certificates. You can use the semantic automated ones or probably use uh, the enterprise root certificate, the manual way of doing it, which I'll be doing now. So I have a, I need to just uh, put in my root certificate. So I already have a root certificate set up, you know, uh, a root CA server set up on my local laptop and I, you can see a root CA over there. I'll have to just paste that over there. Let me show you how it looks. So this is going to be the root CA certificate. Let's just take that and put it here. Let's uh, do some, you know, basic stuff. Uh, let's scroll down and yeah, so let's put the domain name to start with. Probably I could use something like example.com, doesn't matter. I mean, I'm not going to push this to production anyway, so organization name is important. Looks good. And city, probably, I don't know, I could probably put like San Jose or something. And uh, State would be California. Email XYZ at uh, doesn't matter. Poor guy would be, would be getting spammed if someone has this email. Put US import and save. Yeah, that's good. Let's go back. Let's check the certificates over here. There are so many certificates. 
we just want the one which we are looking for so i'll have to probably go and put a pipe command right we have the certificate which is looking good So uh, what do we do next? Let's go to the uh, devices or certificates probably, uh, or we can do devices, yeah. Let's check the controllers. We should have one controller up there. The certificate is not installed. We have just imported the roots here, right? That's it. Let's uh, get a, okay, let's go to certificates and raise a CSR certificate signing request. There you go. Awesome, we have the request. Let's copy that to my local system. Right, let's put it in a folder where I want it. And uh, probably I'll have to open my CA server again. Here you go. It's very simple. I'm going to create a uh, signing request, import it. Sorry, click the wrong one, import it. Go there and okay. So these were probably the older ones, right? That's fine. Let's just get this. There you go. Successfully imported. Click on that. Say sign. Right. Use the roots here for signing. Right. And uh, we're gonna say it's gonna be a TLS client. There you go. Select the TLS client and apply extension, subject, all of that. Probably go to extensions. Have validity for an year, so that looks good. So we gotta export this now. Save it. Uh, request. Let's probably delete this. We are exporting it. Save it. There you go. Probably we'll have to open it on my text editor before I copy it into vManage. Okay, over here, we gotta go to the install certificate piece. Let's put it here. Okay, let me do it again. Paste it, install. Awesome, that looks good. So, gotta wait for that to turn into green. Yeah, 
success that looks good okay so we're going to install vbond now The default credentials are all admin, admin, ad everywhere. It says VH, don't be confused, it's VBond. It's just that both the images are shipped. It's the same image which is shipped for both, right? VBond and VH. What you configure on it makes it work as a VBond. So it's the same image. There you go, putting in the system, putting in the host name. Similar to what we did on vManage, right? Very, very similar. I mean, if you, you can create a template and then kind of automate this part as well, if you want. I mean, since I'm doing it on the lab, I'm doing it manually. System IP is going to be 1.1, 255.12, right? Not, it's not a routable IP. It's just for identification purpose. Site ID is 255. I have to put my organization name, which is same as last time, jmindong-cisco. The NTP is important. NTP server is going to be my R1, R1 internet router, right? Prefer VPN 0. Let's put the vbond IP address and it's going to be a local vbond, right? This device itself is the vbond. So this this line basically tells the VH or basically tells the appliance that it itself is the vbond. Let's put in the clock. It's going to be America, Los Angeles. We are good to commit now. Let's look at the interface configuration. So you see there is a VPN zero and there is Ethan uh, gigabit zero slash zero under it. There are a lot of services which are disabled under the tunnel interface, which we would need for the bring up. So you would see you'll see that I'll basically go and disable that tunnel interface as well. Let's go and put in uh, the VPN zero, the IP route default route, which is R1. Under the interface, we'll have to put in our IP address. So we have disabled the tunnel interface so that because we want like i said we want a lot of services right so in fact uh, yeah so we have disabled the tunnel interface. that's fine let's check if we can ssh into vbond now yes i can that looks good. So we have connectivity from the headquarters to my VBond. Let's go under devices. Let's go to controllers.
bit slow, bear with me. Let's put in the IP of vbond. Put in the admin username and password username as well. Uh, uh, I mean the admin and password both are admin admin. Right, so let's go in here. So that's good. Looks good. Let's check on vbond. Show certificate root CA. Let's pipe it. There you go. We have the certificate. Vbond received the certificate from vManage. So you don't have to explicitly put the root CA again on this one. Let's go inside certificates. Now we have to generate that CSR for vbond. Same process what we followed in vManage. We download the certificate. You have to open the CS server. Create a new signing request. Not new, sorry, import. Let's import it from that request path. There you go, we have it. Awesome, we have that. Let's sign it. Use the, yep, let's select that and select root CA. That's TTLS, yep, so client. Let's go to extensions. One year is good, so that looks good. We have both the certificates here. Let's export it. Let's see where it is getting saved. Yeah, that looks good. There you go, it would have exported now. I want to open that in a text window and show it to you guys how it looks. Yep, here it is. You're gonna basically copy this. It's going to hold all that information, right? Which we have put in my root CA. So all of that information will be there here. So let's install it. Let's save it, install. There you go, that is going to turn to green in a few seconds. Yep, it's installed. The certificates are installed for VBond. Let's check on vManage what has happened. Show control local properties. This is the command used to just check the readiness of the appliance. Right, you can see it's installed. You can see everything is valid, so looks good. So let's uh, <clears throat> go go inside uh, uh, VPN zero and enable this tunnel interface, which we have disabled earlier. So this is important because now we will start looking into how we can connect vManage to vBond, right? So this tunnel interface is needed for it to create those connections, right? Uh, so there you go. I've enabled it. There are still some services which are disabled. So let me go and enable all of them. I mean, I wouldn't suggest to do this in a production environment, but I'm going to go and do it here because it is lab. Yeah. 
let's go inside that and enable it allow service all let's commit it On the VBOD, you can't do show control local properties. You gotta do show orchestrator local properties because VBOD is the orchestrator, right? So a slight change in the command. So there you go. Everything is valid, installed. Let's further go and enable the tunnel interface on VBound as well because we had disabled it earlier when it was coming up. But now we are going to allow and allow all the interfaces on it, all, all the services on it. Oh, it's not gonna allowing me to commit because encapsulation is not mentioned. Let's put our encapsulation as IPsec for the tunnel. The thing is, uh, VBond though it doesn't use any IPsec, we gotta still put it because, like I said, VBond is same as V Edge, right? The images are same, so I think because of that, we still have to put in the encapsulation. You can see the various connections, so I can see connections going to the vManage, which is a good sign. Probably some of these are the older connections might expire soon, but for now we have some connections going to vManage, which is good. It means that we have connectivity and all of that. You can see DTLS is the protocol used for these connections. So basically the management connections, right? Going from vManage to vBond. So now you can see the numbers appearing here, one and one, right? Under vManage and vBond, which is good. So refresh it, looks good, yep. We've done a lot of tasks. I think the only thing remaining last is uh, getting the vSmart up. So let's go back to that. Let's go to vSmart, login. Host name very much same as earlier. It's all bootstrap configuration. Let's put in the site ID, system IP, and okay, domain ID also will be needed here because uh, we're gonna have uh, OMP running here, right? The uh, the overlay routing protocol so the overlay control pane basically so that's the domain id is was needed for that organization name is good and what else ntp and we'll have to put the clock time zone let's put the clock uh, you have to go out. This is very annoying. You've got to go out, go to the system mode, and then put it. Let's put in the VBOND IP as well. That's needed. So there you go. That is good. We will have to do the interface configuration now so that it can connect up to the vManage. Let's look at the config. Okay, so it's, we have VPN 0 and we have Ethernet 0. System VPN 0, IP routes, the default gateway is the R1 internet.
let's see if we have connectivity yes we have for default gateway towards remanage also yes towards rebound also is an s great let's check the ntp yep that looks good All right, we go to devices. We gotta add this vSmart to the list of controllers. Hold on, guys, we're almost reaching the end. We're gonna put in the IP address here. There you go, got added. Show certificate, let's pipe it and put in JM. Yep, there you go, we have our certificate. So the vSmart has received the certificate from vManage. So we're gonna create the CSR now. We'll have to do the same process as we did for the V manage and V bond. Yep, there you go. Let's go and uh, sign this one. is as the same thing right what we did so there you go we should have three certificates which looks good okay uh, Okay, let's just copy this. Let's try to install it. Oh, that's weird. I think I'll have to fix this. That's weird. I've not seen that before. Did I make a mistake? Let's pause, let's pause my screen for a minute. Let me try to figure out what's happening. Oh, okay. So it was a pretty simple mistake. I was actually copying the signing request as well, right? So I'm supposed to actually copy the signed certificate. I copied the wrong stuff, my bad. Let me go and reinstall it. There you go, now it goes through. Let's wait for that to turn green. That looks good. Let's refresh it. Yep, looks good. <clears throat> Let's go back. Let's uh, send to VBond because we have to tell the VBond about the new controllers getting added. Let's check on V bond. What what do we have? Right, so we have the V smarts here. Okay. That looks good.
let's go to certificates let's go to controllers you can see everything beautifully appearing here everything is installed rebound updated so that's good let's go to vsmart and run show control you know uh, your regular command right local properties it looks everything looks good let's go down here we still don't have control status interesting can you guess why yep we have to enable the tunnel interface right so so that the vsmart can start forming its tunnels towards the vmanage and vbond so those tunnels will basically appear up there that's committed We have that. We have allow service all, which means it's looking good. Show control connections. Do we see anything here? Yep, we have it. Amazing. So we have the connections appearing here, which is good. Let's go back and yep. So we see we smart up there, and okay, we still don't see the control connections. Weird. I gotta see that so let's wait for a couple of seconds I think it takes time to refresh um, here on the dashboard hope I've done everything I think I have let me check like the devices if everything is good yeah it looks good let's check on the check on what let's check on the other side as well which is uh, Certificates probably should have. Oh, yeah, it's up. Okay, so you can see the control status is up. You can see the control device also appearing here. So that looks good, right? Everything is good. So we have verified on the dashboard, <coughs> and we have also verified uh, on the CLI as well, right? We just let's look at the topology one last time. Did I close it? I think I closed it. Oh, it's here. Okay. So yeah. So there you go. We have the we have set up the three controllers as part of the lab. We have not done anything on the edges side. Um so yeah, I think that's good for today. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll be back. Hope so, with more labs. Thanks again.